Okay, so we got the apron painted. We're gonna go in there and bring it out. Um, I'll get it on the assembly bench and we'll start putting all the bits and pieces on it and then get the apron mounted up to the saddle and show you a bunch of the things that I've uh, learned along the way um, that you might find helpful. Hey, if you guys like this uh, video or the series of videos, hit the subscribe button, uh, like, it just is helpful to know that somebody out there is finding this little project uh, interesting or intriguing. Um, I have a number of other projects that I'm uh, working on. Some I've actually already recorded that I'll be putting up. And then I'll do a few walk-arounds of some different things that I've already completed here and see what kind of stuff people find interesting or helpful. And, uh, you know, hopefully... Um, you know, keep this community going. It's been amazing uh, finding all these videos that, uh, whether it's, you know, how do I get a 77 Cadillac Seville brake caliper off or fix my Harbor Freight uh, uh, ultrasonic uh, bath. Somebody has done everything before and has recorded it and put it up on YouTube and it's, uh, it's an amazing classroom. So. Uh, just let me know that uh, you're interested in what I'm doing and, and uh, any suggestions would be helpful as well. You know, I'm new at the video thing. Um, it's been a, quite a learning experience and, you know, when I go back and look at some of these videos, some things are kind of cringeworthy. Um, so I'm just kind of learning as I go and um, I'm actually having some fun with it and um, hopefully, hopefully you guys are too. Thanks. So you can see I got it all painted up. Pretty happy with the way it came out. Um, I did take these clutch pieces off and polish them. I replaced the oil indicator. That there's two gaskets in there and the indicator, level indicator. So uh, what I'm going to put on right now, sorry, is the uh, this is the feed direction, and this knob right here is mounted there with the roll pin. So we'll get this thing put on. All right, let's get this guy on. So right here, this goes on. I'm going to push this feed back through from the, this side to hold it there and then get the knob on there and make sure that I'm lined up with the hole that goes through there. A bit more. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go grab a, uh, a tapered uh, punch so that I can keep it lined up while I tap the uh, roll pin in. Okay, let's get this nice started here. Okay, let's see what I have going on here. You know, I just had to move the camera out of the way so I could get a nice, uh, you know, sort of square shot at that, that pin. So, got that pin in there. So now we got that where we need it to be. So I think the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put the, uh, the half nuts on the other side. So I mentioned I was going to start with the half nuts which go right here but I think I'm actually going to start with the worm gear and that goes underneath this cover right here I just threw these screws back in just to keep from losing parts up in there. We talked a little earlier about the different ways that 
certain parts on this machine get oiled and you notice right here there's an oil tube and it drips down onto the worm gear that sits in this well. Let's get things a little bit cleaned up here. All right, so I'm gonna go get a little whey oil and I'm gonna go round up the parts and we'll bring you right back. Okay, let's get this lead screw, uh, I'm sorry, the worm gear installed here. So what we have is obviously the gear and we have two sets of bearings on either side. So what I'll do here is I'm gonna get a little bit of whey oil on this and and we'll slip him in there. Maybe I'll just throw a little bit of whey oil on the fronts and the backs here of the races. Okay. So the drive shaft that comes out of the apron is offset relative to this housing, which allows you to sneak this gear in like that. So it's gonna get a little bit of oil on this on both sides and in the middle. So we're gonna send him in here. The other thing is this little area is like a little well and when the oil, the lubricating oil comes from the pump, drips down onto this mechanism, this well actually fills up and there's a little, a little uh, pipe plug that goes right in the bottom here. So we're gonna get that in there. I'm just guessing that over time, the well probably fills up and, and overflows, leaks out, and just goes down into the sump in the bottom. So I'm gonna get this screw tightened in there, or the, the uh, pipe plug in there. Okay, I just, the reason why I do it, I'm doing it right now is because I just can see myself forgetting that. All right, so we'll get a little bit of oil on this bearing. Okay. And then we'll slip it down into here. Okay, so now that's in there, and then here's the gear itself. So I may have mentioned this on my other, on one of the other videos that on the first lathe that I did, this gear was completely worn, and um, I wound up getting a new one from Monarch, and uh, this this one here, I, I would have to imagine that at some point in its life, it's already been replaced. Here's that gear I was talking about. So I, I didn't throw it away. Um, I kept it. This is from the, the first uh, 10E that I, double E that I did. And if you look at that, you can see how worn that is. Let me see if you can get it in focus. So if you see like the point right there and that piece right where my fingernail is, that's how much has been worn off. So there you go. So this was on the earlier machine. So obviously this had quite a bit of wear and I replaced this gear on the machine that I'm currently doing that we're going to go back to here in a second. That one has been, uh, that one was great. No problems. So we just get a little bit of oil on here. I mean, it's not that there's no wear on this one. There is wear on it, but I don't think it's, it's um, enough of an issue to replace. So let's get this key lined up and then there's a grub screw right here. Let's see. You see there's a Woodruff key in that shaft. So I might have to go get a soft blow mallet to tap that thing down. Oh, there we go. Okay. So I'm happy with where that is. And get that gear out of the way. And then we'll tighten up the club screw. All 
I believe that there's a there was a small depression in the shaft that positions this gear front to back. I don't think there's any need to put a bomb torque on that. It's not necessary. Okay, so now we'll go round up the half nut parts. I may have to go back to the uh, video and figure out how it all goes back together. I may not remember. So let's go get those parts and get this all wrapped up. I'm going to leave this cover off, if you remember cover that goes on here. Uh, let's see. I can have this. We'll leave that off for now because I think I need to get at these parts here. Okay. All right, so we're going to get on these half nuts. Get these, these guys installed. So um, I have not gone back and looked at the video on how they go together so we're gonna try to do this from memory and some of you guys probably have a better memory than i have but we'll see so the way this works and the way i think it's going to be best for me to install it so this uh bracket goes on here there's also this little fellow that slides in here and what this does is, so this interlock device actually uh, makes sure that you're in neutral on your feed, forward or reverse, before you engage the half nuts, prevent you from shifting direction while half nuts are engaged. So we'll get these, these guys installed. So the other thing I'd point out is this half, also has an oil feed hole right here. And let me just make sure you can see all that. Yeah. So it has an oil feed hole right here and there's an oil feed hole right there. So I'm guessing, and I can see it right here, there's a little port here that goes down, hits this hole right here, drips down, comes out here, and it lubricates the, the half nuts. So I'm going to think that this obviously will be the top. So I'll get a little bit of whey oil on here. Excuse me. Uh, and I think the best way to get this in here is this is going to go this way because there's a couple, there's a washer and a nut to go on this side. All right, so I'll put this here. Okay. So I'm going to take a little Allen wrench and put it through the tapered pinhole in the actuator here. And then just make sure that it's moving. Okay, so now we'll do the same with this side. We'll get a little bit of whey oil in here. We'll stick it through the hair like that. Okay, and we'll get these folks with some oil on here and we'll get some in there all right so all right everybody's in and we'll just give this a try make sure it's going to operate okay nice and smooth all right so now, remember before I mentioned the position of this guy, and I could see a little mark right here, so that tells me that I believe that this guy goes right here. So I'll push him in and lock it in. That should hold it in place. All right, so now I'll get some lube in here and here. Now, there's also a Allen, uh, Allen screw right here and what appears to be a plunger in there. So there's these little detents here. So I'm quite sure that that plunger probably got a spring in there. I did not take that apart. So let's just make sure that that plunger is free. 
it works great. Okay. So we have a dowel pin here and right there. And then this should slide right over here like this. Okay. I like the way that fit on there and we'll do the other side so again looking at the wear or you know the markings that are on here it appears to me that this probably goes this way and let's take a look to see if we think it lines up correctly and it matches the wear pattern, which it appears to. Okay, so let's get a few screws started. snug right there for some reason. It's the counterboard hitting on the Allen. So let's tighten these up. I'm just kind of doing a light tight on them, light tightening, so that I can just make sure that we have good movement. that nothing's binding. And what I might try doing is I'll fit the uh, lead screw in just to make sure that this is oriented correctly with that one because if it's not, it'll be a major fiasco to take this all back apart again, just to switch this thing over. This one we know goes in that position. And I'm looking, I don't see anything that jumps out at me that I might have it upside down, but let's see. All right. Okay, so it still works nice. So we'll grab the lead screw. Alright. Okay. So now if I gauge these half nuts. Okay, there we go. I would say it appears to be right. Well, it's amazingly tight clearances. <laughs> but, you know, they've got it all figured out. Okay. So I'm confident that we've got it installed correctly. So now, we will put these washers and nuts on. And then, of course, I'll go back and tighten those up. What I'll do also, I'm just going to give a quick test of the, the interlock that's connected to that direction screw. 
our direction knob actuator. Another, another try on the. Make sure the half nuts work. Okay. Yep. All right. We get a wrench from that. Looks like uh, maybe nine sixteenths or five eighths. So now we opened up the half nut, so I should be able to move that guy in and out, and I can. And I can feel those detents. And so when I would come here to engage the half nuts, stuff. There we go. And you can see this moving, right? So now if I go to move this, I can't. So that appears to be working correctly. Okay. All right. So this is that wad of material that was underneath here, so we'll put this back in. I want to get all the fibers down below because I don't want them getting squished in between the uh, saddle and this apron. Well, guess what? You guys couldn't see that. So let me raise you up a little bit. Okay. This is what I'm talking about right here. So I stuffed that back in there. So I'm going to soak that up with some whey oil so that it's uh, kind of sort of pre-primed. So we'll just get some in there. And get it all tucked down in there nice. All right, that's pretty good. So now we will uh, let me bring it back down, and we'll get this cover back on. And here's some screws. Now, if you remember also that drain plug that's in the bottom here, don't remember if I tightened it up. So we're gonna just make sure that it's tight. It is accessible on the machine once the apron is installed. I would imagine that there's probably some, makes some sense to do a little periodic maintenance and take that plug out and let the uh, oil drain out and maybe, I, I, I never tried it, but maybe you can flush out the, um, the uh, that little cavity down there while the uh, apron is installed. I'm not sure. Okay. And we're going to just double check to make sure we're free with everything here. Okay. And make sure that we've got that's all good. All right. Okay. Really hoping that when this is all said and done, we don't have any extra parts. All right, so I'm gonna just tighten down that 
piece on the bottom, or that drain plug down here on the bottom. There's another drain plug on the end here for the this whole bottom sump. I'll get that in there, and then we're going to put on the electric lead screw, um, I guess, trip mechanism. This is the thing that sort of gives you your, your travel for the reverser. Okay.